I'm here at TV Lines Comic Con interview suite with American Gods Ricky Whittle. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having such a nice, cool room. Thank Have you started <laughs> filming season two yet? No, we will not start filming season two till next year. Have you seen a script? I have not seen a script. I just kind of know fleeting ideas. Mm -hmm. I know we will begin at se uh, the season at uh, House on the Rock, mm -hmm. the iconic part of the book. Mm -hmm. um, we also finished off the season with uh, a very Im impressive standoff that wasn't in the book. Um, you know, Shadow finally gives himself over to Mr. Wednesday. He finally believes after a whole season of not. And then we find out that his wife has come back from the dead and it wasn't a dream. She, he didn't imagine her. She's actually alive. Mm -hmm. So technically his world is perfect now. The love of his life is back. He now knows Odin, the god of all gods. But then we also find out that he killed his wife. So right. what's going to happen there? We kind of get to see that dynamic take off and, and see what happens in that, tri that little triangle. Yeah, I mean, not to mention his wife is rapidly decaying, physically falling apart. I mean, I like to think we all are. <laughs> <laughs> and that love is about the inside and how she makes Shadow feel. I don't think it's about her looks, because it's obviously not about her personality, because she was a very horrible person. <laughs> so I don't think he's that bothered about looks either. I think he just he just found someone that you know he could call home, fortunately. But uh, at least now she seems to love him. Um, before, it, she was just kind of like, yeah, he, I love him, but you know. Death has brought out the best in her, perhaps. I believe so. No, it's, it's that beautiful thing. She, yeah. she didn't start to live until she died. Right. Um, and it's kind of similar for Shadow, you know. He didn't kind of really see life until, until she passed away, and now he's kind of been reborn and awoken into this world of gods and, and, and deities. Mm -hmm. Brian Fuller mentioned, we talked a lot about the bunnies in season one, and how they, especially <laughs> toward the end, they were kind of everywhere. And he said, watch out for the cats in season two. And Shadow in the book has an interaction with Someone who might also be a cat. It's so hard to keep this <laughs> PG and keep this clean, but Shadow may have some kind of relationship with a cat. In the book, it's kind of, we're a little bit out of order of the events of the book, right? Yes. So by this point in the book, it would have happened already, but this you, you're telling me that this may be on the menu for what's um, coming up? There is a very uh, uh, loved character in the book called Bast. Mm -hmm and uh, she works alongside uh, Mr. Ibis and, and the Jackal in the funeral parlor, and she may take a liking to, to Shadow Moon, and things may happen, but as we saw in the first season, all is not what it seems. Bilquist and Shadow, are they, do you think they're gonna get any kind of interaction? I mean, we saw her on the way to House on the Rock in the season finale. There were talks in the first season that the two were gonna meet. Um, and the story took a, took a turn in a different direction. And I'm glad there was a lot of kind of changes made throughout the season uh, in direction and story um, for the better. Uh, looking at the whole kind of timeline now, you know, what Brian and Michael have been able to do with Neil's source material has been incredible so that even fans of the book don't know what's going on. As you mentioned, we've talked about how things were rejiggered, reshot, yeah. moved around, and you guys didn't even see it until it was kind of all done, right? I mean, you didn't have a really good grasp on it until it was all finished. It was about episode six. I believe we, we, we kind of changed the whole timeline again on ourselves yeah. and went in and reshot lots of different things and we took out some things because we originally had Shadow believing a lot sooner right. and Brian and Michael kind of felt that it took away the friction in the dynamic between Shadow and Mr. Wednesday and they kind of enjoyed the, the kind of the two kind of going out at each other in the, in the car all the time. Um, so they moved it towards the, the finale and, and we, the, we jigged a few things around so it's always changing. Um, and the great thing about Brian and Michael is, is they can even take existing material, switch it around, move things around, and make a completely different story or, or change the traje trajectory. Um, they're, they're absolute genius uh, showrunners, and uh, I'm very honored to be working with them. So everything keeps changing, everyone keeps moving around, but I'm looking forward to, to season two. Like I say, we'll, we'll start on House on the Rock. We follow the book. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we may head to the, that funeral parlor. And then we've got lots of new characters that we want to introduce, like Bass, like mm -hmm. maybe even Sam Crow. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got we have, of course, we already have this incredible cast from the first season. So we need to see more of, you know, Mr. Nancy and Easter and Tech Boy, Mr. Whirl. You know, what's media going to be doing in season two? Who, who, you know, she. My favorite was probably David Bowie. Yeah, uh, her, that's awesome. her incarnation of that. So there was a lot of names in the hat for the first season. Um, which got pushed, um, and we went with the four that we went with. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with, with, with all those names uh, yeah. in season two. Um, she nailed those four. Yeah. 